Welcome. This is part two of a two-part training to help families and schools support a child's behavior. When behavior gets in the way of learning, schools are responsible to figure out what the child is trying to communicate and teach the child what to do instead. The behavior intervention plan is built so adults intervene early and often to help a child learn alternative ways to get their needs met. The behavior intervention plan is often shortened to BIP or the BIP. The school and family meet to review a functional behavioral assessment, the FBA which is the topic of part one of this training. At the FBA review meeting, the team looks at a draft of the behavior intervention plan. The BIP describes how the school might support the student in replacing unskilled behaviors with ones that work better. Families can come prepared to this meeting by asking for a copy of the draft BIP before they meet. Write down questions ahead of time to make the meeting more productive. The school and family will build the final behavior intervention plan together. Here's what a school starts with when they draft a behavior intervention plan. A link to this model form from the state is on PAVE's website, where you clicked to watch this video. The BIP describes the behavior using unbiased language and provides information about what's happening in the environment when the behavior happens. A key part of the behavior plan is replacement behavior. That's what the school will teach the student to do instead of the behavior that is causing problems. The replacement behavior must achieve the same function for the student. For example, if the unworkable behavior is a way for the student to express an unmet need, then the replacement be behavior must meet the same need. The replacement behavior is where teaching and learning happen to make a behavior change. The other two sections of the BIP list how school staff will reinforce the desired behaviors and what methods they use to make sure BIP implementation is consistent throughout school. Family input is very important here because parents know their children well and understand what may and may not work to encourage a behavior change. Behavior modification is informed by many theories. A familiar strategy is to use rewards, referred to as carrots, to motivate a student. It's important for families, counselors, school staff, and anyone else with knowledge of the student to talk about what is likely to work well for that specific student. This slide provides sample questions families might bring up to discuss an individualized strategy. Note that for some children who have experienced trauma, a reward system, can backfire. A team can discuss this question. Does the offer of a reward give the child a sense of confidence? If there's a token, a ticket, a treat, or a privilege being offered for behavior, does the child respond well? If earning the reward leads to an I can do this attitude, then a token system might work very well. If the child becomes agitated and anxious and expresses feelings of inadequacy, then the token system might be causing the student to feel under pressure and less capable. The offer of a token also might fail to work if the student is so fearful of losing the reward that they feel punished ahead of time. They might give up because they are so afraid to fail. An alternative might be to use encouragement instead of rewards. We'll talk about how to use encouragement in a moment. 
First, let's talk about the opposite of a carrot, a stick. Behaviorists call any type of punishment a stick. The theory is that a threat of punishment will motivate the child to make a good choice. Punishments at school might be lost recess, detention, denial of access to sports, withholding of privileges, or exclusionary discipline, which is a term that describes any time a child is removed from their educational placement for disciplinary reasons. Like with carrots, the use of sticks needs to be considered individually. Here's a question to consider. Is there reason to believe that the threat of punishment improves a child's current or future behavior? For example, has withholding recess in the past led to a shift in the choices that a student is making? Has a suspension or lost access to sports ever helped the child improve their behavioral choices? Most behavioral data indicate that punishment has a limited impact and that positive reinforcers work more consistently. That's why many schools refer to a behavioral plan as a positive behavior support plan. Here's a phrase from research that points out that adults should focus on the positive. Five to one gets it done. Data show that if adults point out what the child is doing right five times for every single reminder about what the child is doing wrong, the child's behavior moves toward expectations more quickly. It's best to save negative reinforcers for really important issues, especially those related to safety. The negative reinforcer on this slide is about crossing the street. A firm voice that may feel negative to the child may be important to reinforce this serious safety concern. You cross the street and forgot to look and listen. That's dangerous, not okay. If the child has already gotten a negative reinforcer for something important like street safety, the adult can look for five times to call out something the child is doing well. Here are five examples from this slide. One, great job waiting to raise your hand before asking your question during science. Two, I appreciate how you used a calm body and a quiet voice while you were walking to lunch today. Three, I noticed that you used your break card and quietly went to the break corner today. That was super helpful. Thank you. Four, I saw you get frustrated when you were playing ball at recess today. I also saw you step away from the game. That was a good choice. Five, great job using your words to explain how you were feeling when you were mad about losing the game. I'm glad we can talk about our feelings. Families and schools can work together to use these principles and similar strategies to teach and reinforce behavior across a variety of settings. Family and school teams also can share ideas about the differences between encouragement and rewards. In general, a reward, including praise, tends to trigger an emotional response. Some people feel happy from earning an award and that might motivate a repeat performance. Some people, however, might be triggered into a thought spiral, something like this. I got a reward, but it was super hard to earn. I don't know if I deserve it anyway, and I'll probably never be able to earn it again. I'm not good at this, and I'm pretty sure I'll be a failure if I try again. I really want it, though. I'm a failure. That's how praise can sometimes feel like pressure. Promised rewards can feel like impending punishment to people who don't have enough confidence to override their fear of failure. Praise, rewards, or the promise of a reward put someone into their downstairs brain. 
The downstairs brain is where emotions are stronger than thinking. Well-placed encouragement, on the other hand, can trigger a cognitive response. Cognitive thought happens in the upstairs brain where problems get solved and people think through what to do or say. Carefully worded encouragement can help a person reflect on what they learned and accomplished. All of this is rooted in neuroscience, and there are many researchers who have theories about why this is true. A neuroscientist named Dan Siegel came up with theories about the upstairs and downstairs brain. It's helpful to understand that well-constructed encouragement can help a child understand what they did well. They learn, so they are more likely to repeat their successful choice of action. Here are a few examples of phrases that provide encouragement. I watched you take out your notebook and pen so that you were ready for class before the bell rang. Thank you for being ready for class. You put on your shoes and socks all by yourself, and now you are ready to get on the bus. It's helpful when you take care of your needs. I noticed that you had a question during class and started to say it out loud, but then you waited and asked your question when I was done giving instructions. Thank you for remembering that rule. You raised your hand before speaking. That helps our whole class with our learning. I really appreciate you. Notice how these encouraging phrases review the steps the person took to perform the task. That's reinforcement for learning. There's also some encouragement related to belonging in the last one listed here. The teacher tells the student that their action helps the whole class, reinforcing that this behavior is how to belong and contribute. A sense of belonging can be a critical factor for children who struggle to maintain a feeling of well-being. Belonging is why relationships rooted in trust and mutual respect are key to recovery from trauma. Belonging is necessary for a sense of safety, and a sense of safety is necessary to stay away from the basic fight-flight responses of the body's nervous system. A child in fight-flight is likely to act in ways that don't work very well at school. Keeping a child out of fight-flight is a major goal of a behavior intervention plan. So this is an important conversation to have. Misunderstanding what motivates a child's behavior is a big miss on a behavior intervention plan. So is shaming a child or getting stuck on what the child is doing wrong. This slide shows a simple chart the school and family might use to share key information from the behavior intervention plan. PAVE provides this chart as part of a handout for you. A link to the handout is clickable where you found this video. Included is a worksheet to simplify your child's behavior plan. Notice that each target behavior is paired with a replacement behavior. Keep in mind that the replacement behavior is what the student is learning to do instead of the behavior that is causing problems. A replacement behavior cannot be a generic goal or a generic intervention. For example, a child doesn't learn to stop hitting by getting more help with their math. The target behavior serves a purpose for the child and the replacement behavior must serve the same purpose to help the child learn a new way. If the child is hitting when they are angry or feeling powerless, for example, then they need to learn a new action to take when they are angry or feeling powerless. What gives them a stronger sense of power than hitting a peer and getting a big reaction? How might using a script to resolve the conflict create a sense of empowerment, for example? 
These are considerations for family and school teams to discuss for each individual student. Here's one more little tip. If adults say what they want children to do in clear words, the directions are more likely to land. Let's take an example from the swimming pool. Running on the deck is dangerous, so lifeguards consistently tell people to walk. Saying the word don't before a command may get you the opposite. If you say don't run, for example, the child might only hear run. Behavioral interventions work best if they follow the same principle. Instead of saying, don't interrupt, the adult can give reminders by saying, wait. This video is provided by Parent Training and Information, a program of PAVE. Our nonprofit has been helping families in Washington State since 1979. Students, family members, and professionals can get direct assistance by going to our website, wapave.org, and clicking Get Help. We provide language translation options, and you can also leave a message by phone to request our help, 800-572-7368. If you need help with the accessibility of any of our resources, please let us know. PAVE is not a legal service organization and cannot give legal advice or represent families. Our funding comes from the U.S. Department of Education, but the U.S. government doesn't review our training materials in order to endorse them. We'd love to know whether this training was helpful for you. On the page where you found this video, there's a link to a short survey. Thank you for sharing your feedback. Please contact us at wapave.org for individualized assistance or further training opportunities.